What's up everybody, Valkosanari is back with a very exciting tutorial for you guys. I've been getting some requests on how to set up Brigandine and play it properly. So there's a few things that can be um, you know, a little finicky whenever you download it and start booting it up from scratch without doing a little bit of configuration. So you need a little bit more steps in order to make it run smoothly. So I'm going to take you step by step on how to set it up and all the links that you will need um, that you'll see on my screen will be in the description. So let's go ahead and get into setting up the emulator first. Okay. So the first link that's going to be in the description will be labeled as emulator. Please click on that. It'll take you to this screen. So what I'm going to be getting is an older version of the emulator because I want to do it exactly like I have it set up. That way I don't run into anything new or, you know, weird or whatever. So uh, if you want 2.0 and want to, you know, full with that, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I'm going to go for 1.9 because that's what I've been using for this entire uh, thing on my channel. So right here, EPSXC version 1.9, go ahead and click on that and save it to your desktop or wherever you're going to remember, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to put it on my desktop for easy access. Okay, so that is the first link. So the next one we're going to get is the BIOS file. Okay, so the next link will be labeled as BIOS. It'll take you to here to EMU Paradise. Go ahead and scroll down quite a bit until you see PSX BIOS SCPH 1001 and it's a zip file so you will need an extraction program either 7-zip or WinRAR in this case I am using WinRAR so you'll need this for all the files that we download by the way so alright so go ahead and get that I'm gonna save it to the desktop as well easy access and there's the BIOS okay the next one <laughs> is going to be a plugin file you definitely definitely need this to configure your video settings properly to make sure there's as little glitches as possible within the game in regards to video and audio setup. So when you go to this link on the plugin link, it will take you here to Pete's PSX GPU plugins. You want the latest version, which is 2.9. It's the very top selection right here. So go ahead and grab that and save it to the desktop. Good. All right. And here is the big one. This is where you're going to get your game. So the uh, link will be labeled as ROM slash game in the description below. So go ahead and click on that. It'll bring you right here to the main ROM Hustler homepage. And go to the search bar up to up here where it says find ROMs and type in Brigandine. Okay, hit enter. You should only get one file for this. Here's Brigandine right here. So once you click on that, it'll give you an option here to click to download this ROM and the link will appear in a few seconds okay very very easy stuff it's not difficult alright and here we go save it to the desktop okay so while the download is cooking let me go ahead and uh, explain what I'm going to be doing next and how to configure this properly um, as far as not having any glitches with the, with the game known glitches so there is a very well-known glitch about the game where a lot of the music is cut out. Uh, specifically, a lot of the orchestrated music. Like when you're on the world map, you're not going to hear any music. When you're in the main menu screen, you're not going to hear any music. It's just going to be like the MIDI music or whatever. So this file contains two different files that you can extract. The bin file and the Q file. Okay, I'll be going over that once we open up the actual game. But you want to open up the Q file. If you do, then all of the music will work. So please make sure we're doing that. Um, that way you can play as it was <laughs> in the PlayStation version. So, alright. And we're done. Cool. So the ROM is installed or downloaded. And now we want to go ahead and get one more file and this is for controller support. You do not need this if you don't want. Um, I'm gonna put the uh, link in the description for the downloads menu, not the home menu. Come on. There we go. Okay, so this is the page that should pop up if you click the link in the description. So this will be labeled as controller support. Okay, so if you want to play with the controller, 
go ahead and click on the, the top file here, Input Mapper. That's the development project. And you want the latest version, of course. So here is 1.5.31. Go ahead and click on the download link on the right-hand side. Accept the terms. And download. Okay? That's going to be on the desktop as well. Alright, so I'm not going to run this because I already have it installed, but when you do run it, you're going to be just taken through a very basic uh, initial setup, um, nothing too fancy. Just go ahead and install it, and you should get a shortcut on your desktop. Okay, so we've got all of our files. Let's go ahead and pop back to our desktop, and they're all right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and extract them one by one to make sure we're doing this uh, in the correct order. All right. So when you open up the EPSXE emulator folder, you're going to see all of this junk right here. Um, well, not junk. You need this. <laughs> so you want to copy or drag and drop all of these into a separate folder. So I highly recommend that you go to your desktop, right click, and make a new folder. I'm just going to go ahead and label this as EPSXE for easy access. And go ahead and drag and drop all of these files into that folder. That shouldn't take more than a few seconds. All right, and we're done. All right, so this uh, can go away. You don't need this open anymore. Let's see, and you can also get rid of this if you like. So, recycle bin. Open up your uh, emulator folder. We'll take a look at what we need to uh, do further to configure this properly. So, keep this folder open as we go to the next uh, segment here. So. The next uh, step to do is to install the BIOS file. So open up the next file that we saved, which is the BIOS. You have exactly one file in here, the bin file for the BIOS. So when you open up the emulator folder, go ahead and open up the BIOS folder. You can get rid of this, it's perfectly fine. And drag and drop the BIOS, fol the BIOS file <laughs> into the BIOS folder. I'm getting tongue tied here. All right. So once that's done, we can configure that later once we open up the actual emulator. So let's go back to the main folder. And this can go away because we have it. So throw that away. Now we want to do the plugin for your video and audio feeds. Okay. So open up the, uh, the Pete's OpenGL. The only thing you need is this file right here. If you want these readmes, you can uh, copy these to the desktop if you need further instruction or clarification or whatever but you only need this folder right here, the .dll, okay? So, uh, the plugins folder is right here in the main emulator folder, so go ahead and open up the plugins folder. You can remove this. I don't think this has any uh, significance, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and go ahead and drag and drop that main .dll file into that plugins folder. And we're done with that. Okay close this go back here I don't think we need this anymore but just in case uh, and get rid of that okay so we don't need this open anymore except for the actual um, emulator right here so this is the executable file that you're going to use to open up the emulator and then run your game so this tutorial up till this point works for any game that you have Okay, it doesn't have to be brigandine, just whatever game you want. Um, so let's go ahead and open up the brigandine folder. And it comes with this nice little folder right here that contains both files that I was describing before. So go ahead and extract this to your desktop. Okay, extraction is complete. Our file has been extracted to the desktop. So when you open up the folder over here, you can get rid of the uh, WinRAR file, by the way. So open up your brigandine folder you're going to have two different files. You're going to have a bin file and a Q file. So um, the one that you want to open is the Q file. If you do not, then you're not going to have the majority of the music being played and you're going to have some audio glitches going on. So please, please, please open up the Q file every time you play this game so it can run um, like normal. Okay, so we can close that. Now finally, let's get into controller support. So the input mapper that we went ahead and installed is right here. Open that up. And 
and this should bring you to a screen where your controllers are being set up. So, I think I had an instance opened up. Let me close that real quick. Reopen it. It should be blank. There we go. Okay. So when you open it, no controllers should be detected. So it should be blank. So take the controller that you want and plug it in via USB, of course, from your computer. Mine is going to be a PS4. So let's go ahead and plug in that bad boy. And we have a fully charged PS4 controller right here. So uh, this is also going to act as a charging agent since you're plugged up via USB. So of course you know what that means. You can play all day, every day, without losing any battery. So that's fantastic. Alright, anyway, go ahead and minimize that. Do not close this or your controller will not work. And now it's finally time to open up the emulator. Okay, so reopen your EPSXE folder and double click the executable file at the very bottom. Okay, so now that we have it open, we can close this. And now we want to config the entire thing here on BIOS and ROMs and stuff like that. So the first thing that you want to do, the very first thing, is go to config and click on BIOS. Go ahead and hit select and make sure that the BIOS file that you downloaded is being selected right here. If you do not have this selected, nothing will work. You can't play any games. <laughs> All right, so make sure that's selected. Very first thing. All right, go back to config and go to video this time. This is where you're going to select the plugin that we installed into the plugin folder. So when you open this up, this will be blank. But if you click the drop down menu, Pete's OpenGL2 driver will be recognized and you'll be able to select it. So select that first and then hit configure. Now right here, you're going to be spending quite a bit of time in here until you get the right setup because everybody's system is different. But if you want a decent setup like I have, this right here seems to work perfect for me. So, but do keep in mind that I also have it set up to record properly as well. So I have this set up in window mode at this resolution. It's not high, of course, but if you just want to play it casually, of course, do full screen. You know, most people do. So this is my resolution on my desktop. Um, pick full screen if you want to go that route. Okay, so right here, if you want to screenshot this or pause the video right here, please do so and take your time and set up every single step that I have in here and see if it works for you. So as long as everything looks uh, according to plan, you should be good to go on playing Brigandy. So, all right, that's that. You don't need to be down here and configure anything unless you have something weird going on that I don't know about. And the last thing you want to do is to configure your uh, gamepad. So let's go ahead and open up the gamepad, go to port one, and open up pad one. This is controller player one. Mine is already set up, as you can tell. So what you want to do is click inside each one of these boxes and hit the corresponding button and it will slot it and make sure it's working properly. So if you're playing any game that uses analog sticks, the analog stick should already be set up no problem. If they're not and there's a problem with it, go to Google, see if you can find some type of uh, fix for it. I know I had to at one point and uh, or you can ask me. We can try to, you know, help each other and do it together. So set up your controller as I have it right here and then you should be good to go. All right. Hit okay. And now we're finally ready to open up Brigandine. So go to file. You want to click on run ISO. Back to my desktop here. Go ahead and find your Brigandine folder. And please, please, please make sure you boot the Q file. If you don't, you're going to have some audio problems. All right. Open that bad boy up. Let's go. Take a few seconds here for the Atlas logo to pop up. There it is. You can hit start to skip that. And the intro cutscene should play. There's that. And here's our intro screen. We are ready to play Brigandine. We're all set up, folks. Congratulations. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this here. All right. If you have any questions or problems or anything going on, 
please comment below and let me know. We'll try to work through it together and I'll try to help as much as I can. Um, and of course, Google is your best friend. So get on there, look up some forums and see what you can find if anything weird is happening or you need to do any other type of configuration with the video or stuff or anything like that. So, all right guys, well, it's been such a pleasure uh, helping you set up Brigandine for the first time. And if you want any uh, setups on recording software like I'm doing on my channel, um, go ahead and hit me up about that as well. I'd love to make a tutorial for that as well for you guys if you want. So, all right, it's Alka Sunari signing off for now. I'll catch you guys later.